In this video, we continue our spotlight for the Shichibukai. So let's get right into part 2. We're gonna pick up right where we left off and move straight on to the majority of the community's favorite waifu <laughs> slash dominatrix <laughs> slash sub Wow, she's weird when you think about it. <laughs> Boa Hancock. Hancock had some pretty badass lines when we last saw her, and I'm excited to see her really exert herself. Because I feel like even in the Marinford War, she hasn't really shown us like 50% of her abilities. I'm wondering if the Marines would launch a full on assault on Amazon Lily. We only saw Kobe on his way to face the Kuja tribe, and since he's a friend of Luffy, he could end up in an awkward position or situation with Hancock and the Marines there. Obviously, Shield as well. <laughs> Frankly, I don't believe that Kobe and his forces are enough if they don't have any Admiral level character with them. It's going to be night night for Kobe until Hancock decides to. Reverse the Mero Mero stone, stone Cursed thing on them. I would l really like to see Hancock and the other Kuja tribe to showcase their talents. I believe that to an extent, their overall combat strength is enough to survive in the new world. Maybe not really rival a uh, whole Yonko Cruise, but maybe they could fight about half or like. 70% of it, Hancock might just be as strong as a Yonko commander level character. We don't know for sure, but I, it would be pretty safe to assume that she's strong enough to be at least, at least Tobiropo level. I just compared her to a Yonko commander level character uh, because if you think about it, this whole abolishment of the Shichibukai thing, she would probably go under the wing of Luffy. No one else fits that role, so if we consider Luffy as a Yonko, one that is replacing Kaido's seat, first of all, thinking about it is awesome. Wow! <laughs> and exciting. But going back, I think that with Luffy replacing Kaido, I tried to draw some parallels with those two, and it carried over with Hancock. I feel like Hancock is just like any all-star. She has Marigold and Sander Sonia, so that's two Tobiropo level characters under her command. Basically, that's the same with Kaido's all-stars. Because I think that with each all-star, there's two Tobiropo level characters between them. And that's why I think of Hancock as a Yonko commander level character. I believe that she would be joining the Straw Hat Grand Fleet, I don't really feel like she's going to be a Nakama unless the attack on Amazon Lily really takes place and takes a turn for the worst. Let's say it becomes a buster call that destroys the whole island, leaving only Hancock and her sisters and maybe Ran, Blue Fan, M Margaret, maybe Apelandra, just a few survivors. And I'm sure most of you would agree that it's highly unlikely for Oda to do that because it would be it would be as unlikely as winning the lottery. It's possible, but chances are you're not gonna win it. Because this is basically Oda killing off how many notable characters in one go. Nope. Under the Gorgon sisters, there are five notable officers. Then we have all of the characters that play the support role for Luffy. Margaret, Sweet Pea, Aphelandra, those are all friendlies as well. So Amazon Lily be being destroyed is probably not going to happen unless Oda decides to have the Kuja flee from Amazon Lily and take shelter in one of Luffy's territories. Probably Fishman Island because it's closer, but more likely Wano because they have those serpent creature things that seem to drag the Kuja pirate ship around. But I totally think that Hancock has a bigger role once the Straw Hats decide to attack the Celestial Dragons. Especially because the Gorgon sisters have beef with them, so 
that's basically expected for them to survive and help Luffy and the Straw Hats overthrow the world government. Yay! Now, lastly, we move on to the favorite Shichibukai of the majority, Mihawk. My favorite Shichibukai as well, for last. Mihawk is now being chased by the Marines, and he's totally excited about it. Actually, he was the only Shichibukai that seemed genuinely excited for it. Nani? Which just screams badass in so many ways. He's generally viewed as one of the strongest characters in the One Piece verse. Personally, I think he's a Yonko level character. I wonder how he stacks up against them, and I really do want to see them fight soon. Hopefully, soon after the war in Wano, I'm thinking about who is actually leading the attack against Mihawk. Because, in the words of Mr. T, I pity the fool. <laughs> I pity the fool that's gonna try and capture Mihawk. That's not exactly gonna be a field trip. I wonder if it's going to be Green Bull. I really do. And I'm hoping for it. I doubt that it's gonna be Borsalino. Because Kizaru might be more focused on what's happening in Wano. Plus, I'm sure I'm not the only one that wants to finally see what's behind door number one. No, I mean, what's behind that silhouette of his, Oda and his silhouette fetishes. This one is by far the longest that we've had a silhouette for. So I'm hoping, well, that's not true. We have Emu and those... Uh, silhouettes be hiding behind the fog back in Thriller Bark. Regardless, I really want to see what Green Bull looks like for sure. Anyway, Green Bull versus Mihawk. That would excite a lot of fans for sure. Because I know I would be. <laughs> but really, I don't expect any Vice Admiral level characters to come even close to Mihawk's strength. I'm sure Vice Admirals can put up a fight. But coming close? Nope! <laughs> Come on. In my opinion, Mihawk is a Yonko level character. And I think that we all agree with that. Because he kept on fighting with Shanks day in and day out before Shanks lost his arm. That is enough evidence for me. I'm not sure if he's stronger than Shanks. Because if they can't kill each other and there was no one that was proclaimed as the winner then I would give Shanks the benefit of the doubt, simply because he has the title of Yonko. And personally, I'm never gonna change my mind on that, that Mihawk is a Yonko level character. But you could change my opinion about his ranking among the strongest characters in One Piece. With that being said, now that the Marines are chasing all of the ex Shichibukai, well, I think that Mihawk would find that entertaining first of all, at the same time, boring. Nani? Let me explain why. I think that he would love to fight day in and day out. I'm sure he's tired of fighting the human drills in Kurai Gana, so the thrill and unpredictability of fighting a human or a human sparring partner would be exciting to him, but at the same time, it's gonna be boring. Because let's face it, how many of those marines that are coming after him are actually vice admirals. Anyone below that would not even be a match, even if that marine knows hockey, even if that marine is actually Kobe. It's gonna be like Zoro versus Pika all over again, but times 10,000, assuming the marines send a buster call to Koregana Island. <laughs> I'm totally excited to see a scene that Mihawk is sitting on his raft, surrounded by 10 battleships, and him laughing before he gives a badass speech, and then he reaches back for his sword and everyone shakes in fear because Mihawk is about to make his move. Just thinking about it just makes me so hyped for it. <sighs> anyway, I'm sure that would just kill his boredom. Just by how much? I don't know. But it could tire him and bore him out after just a few days. He also looks like the kind of guy that would rather be alone at home. 
So seeking shelter from a dependable crew should be an option for him, especially if the Marines become too much of an annoyance to Mihawk. Personally, I think there are only three choices for him. So first is to look for an uninhabited island, someplace like Rusukaina, but not necessarily Rusukaina. I believe that he would fit right in there and be the boss of that place, much like Luffy was, much like he is in Kuregana. <laughs> I believe this option to be the best one. Next would be to join, obviously, Akagami, the Red Hair Pirates. This would make sense because Zoro still wants to surpass Mihawk, and it will be students surpassing the master kind of thing. Ben Beckman doesn't really use a sword, or at least I think he doesn't. So he might be a good fight for Sanji or Jinbei instead. So this really is the next probable choice, especially because he is in good terms with Shanks. And lastly, he could join the Straw Hats. He has a great relationship with Zoro. He won't be as bored, especially if he stays in Wano. Seeing the swordsmanship of the samurai in Wano would be a great and entertaining experience for him. And that would be a great place for him to hide. I'm sure that there are others that think there's a possibility of Mihawk joining the Blackbeard's crew. Personally, I don't like that option, simply because they already have Shiryu. So I don't think that would be a great choice for Mihawk to go to. Anyway, a Shichibukai spotlight with Weevil and Mihawk taking most of the focus would be more than a welcome chapter from Oda. I would really love to see it. So. That's all for today's video. Crush the like button if you enjoyed it. As if you were Mihawk, crushing every marine that comes in range. Just like that like button and subscribe button. Comment down below what you think about the possibility that Mihawk is going to join the Red Hair Pirates. And subscribe to the channel so it could grow and I could provide you with more One Piece content. So, as always, stay safe now. Peace.